Alrighty, y'all. We're going to be taking a look at something kind of cool today. I've been uh, looking to pick one of these up for a little while after I discovered it existed. Apparently, this has been out for about oh, 11 or so months, and I, I actually didn't know until a few months ago. And I finally uh, found one in a good deal and picked one up. So we're, today, we're going to be doing a little unboxing and first shots and impressions on this Diamondback Sidekick Revolver. Now, this is a 22 caliber, if I can get my camera to focus there, 22 caliber revolver. Now, this looks like a single action, you know, cowboy style revolver like the Wrangler or the Heritage, but it's not. This is different, pretty cool. Uh, this, instead of being your ejector rod, you push back to one, unload each round one at a time. This actually pushes forward. Your cylinder pops out. And this is a nine shot revolver. Also in the box, you have an extra cylinder. So they send you one twenty-two long rifle, one twenty-two mag. And the cylinder swap on this is a little difficult, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And, and I think in my, my video at the range, you'll be able to see a little bit of how that works. A couple other things about this. This, on top of being the, the pop-out cylinder, this is also single action, double action. Now the chambers are a counterboard, so dry firing is fine. So you got your double action and your single action. Now I will say <clears throat> the double action trigger on this is pretty heavy, about 13 and a half pounds is what I measured it at. But the single action trigger was under three pounds and you know, both of them, even the double action trigger is smooth. It's just really, really heavy and it's uh, takes a little bit to get used to. This is a black Cerakoted zinc frame. You got some glass filled nylon grips here. Now, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the Ruger Wrangler grips fit on this. So if you want to change your, your grips, uh, double check that before you go order in a set, cause I'd feel bad, but I believe that to be the case. It also will fit, you know, holsters that you have for your Ruger Wrangler. It is a hefty little sucker, uh, 32 and a half ounces. So it does have some weight to it. Uh, it, like I said, it is black Cerakoted frame. It's a really nice Cerakoting on this, but it's a nice finish. Kind of a matte black Cerakot. Uh, this is not a new design. This has been done before. Actually, Harrington and Richardson had a 929 Sidekick. Also, High Standard has made these. But they have not been made, I uh, believe, since the 80s, if I'm correct on that. So this is cool to see this this come back, because this, this is a pretty neat little deal. You, you can... You go to the range and load nine and eject them, you know, like that. And you can get a lot more. Sorry about that. Bumped my camera there. It's annoying me anyway. Uh, you know, I did mark up this Cerakoting here a little bit. This cylinder was pretty tight when I first got this. And and then just messing with it, I, I kind of nicked it up there a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, you just got your trough sight here and your front blade sight, just like a normal you know, single action cowboy style revolver. So pretty cool little deal. I like that it's double action. Also, I also like that it's chambered in 22 mag as well. This could be used for self-defense. If someone just happened to have one of these for plinking and they wanted it to double as, you know, a home defense gun or whatever, uh, 22 mag is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, not the ideal caliber. I, I don't want to stand in front of it. That's for sure. Pretty nifty little gun, and it, it appears to be pretty high quality. And let's uh, take it to the range, get some shots through this, and check it out. Count up. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Alright, so right off the bat, let's talk about some pros and cons. Uh, big pro, the capacity. Nine rounds as opposed to six that you normally get in a 22 single action revolver. The nine round, the extra three rounds don't seem like much, but when you're loading through a loading gate with a round as small as 22 long rifle, 
and you're using your extractor rod to unload each one of those one at a time. This did not feel tedious. It, it was fun. Now, I like a good single action revolver and I shoot them all the time, but this was a nice change. Just really easy to load and unload and that extra capacity really made a fun, for a fun range trip. Uh, another pro would be the single action trigger. Really nice and light. It's easy to be accurate with that. It's a very, very good trigger. Now, a couple cons. The double action trigger is the opposite of the single action trigger. It sucks. It's really, really heavy. It's hard to manipulate. It's hard to stay on target. Even being slow and deliberate, I was still pulling off to my right. And I'm either going to have to get in there and polish that trigger, or I'm just going to have to break it in by shooting it a lot, which I'll probably do because 22 is so cheap. Another big con is the Cerakoting on the cylinder makes the cylinder really tight in the frame. It doesn't want to swing out easily like it should. And that's just going to be wearing some of that Cerakoting off in the right spots where that, that cylinder just kind of pops out. So those are really the only two cons. Uh, one of them's a big con, but those are the only two cons. So accuracy wise, I got single action shots here, pretty accurate. My double action first two cylinders here, my second two cylinders here. And you can see I'm pulling to the right, my right on all of these, just that heavy double action trigger. And then I've got my rapid fire on the bottom down here. A couple of them got away from me, but I was shooting pretty fast. So all in all, pretty accurate. It's just that double action trigger. The, uh, the single action is, you know, easy to shoot and it's uh, easy to be pretty accurate with that. Now the cylinder swap's a bit tricky, and if you're doing this out on the range, be very careful. There's a little spring, a little detent or whatever in there that wants to pop out when you change those cylinders. Uh, I used a roll pin punch, just compressed that, the, the uh, 22 long rifle cylinder popped out. I was able to kind of hold that in there and put my 22 mag cylinder in, but you really have to hold either that roll pin punch or your finger over that to keep it from popping out. And you do have to work it a little bit. I wish that was a little smoother, but it's not bad once you get used to it and you realize where that kind of needs to go. But I wouldn't want to do that in a grassy field because if you lose something out of there, you're going to be ordering parts. I would do this the first time at home where you can see if anything flies out of there and you can find it. But all in all, not too bad. So after the 22 mag cylinder swap, I took my first six shots at the bottom target here, single action. And that's when I ran into a problem. Now, the problem I don't believe is with the firearm because I've had problems with this ammo in a couple other 22 mag uh, handguns. I bought some Hornady VMAX on sale, a couple boxes a few months back. And I've had problems in a couple different handguns with this VMAX. This one, the brass expanded so much I could not get them out of the cylinder. Using the extractor, I had to actually use a roll pin punch and boy, they were stuck in there. So I don't know if they're overcharged, over powdered. Um, not sure what's going on with that. I've never had problems with Hornady VMAX before, but I've had light primer strikes in a Bond Arms review that I just did. And I had some problems in a Walther WMP and now I've had problems in this. So I don't know if I got a couple bad boxes, if it's an anomaly, what, what's going on there. But the brass expanded so much in there. I mean, I almost had to hammer them out of there. They were just stuck. And I shot some CCI Maxi Mag out of there and had no problems. So I do believe ammo related. Now I took some, after I got those six rounds out, I took some more shots, double action at the top target. And you can see my single action here, pretty accurate. My double action still pulling off to the right. And that's what you get with a almost 14 pound trigger. So all in all, like this gun, glad it's double action. That's a nice feature. Wish that the double action trigger wasn't so bad.